Recently, a friend of mine asked for help building a workbench. He wanted something simple and very sturdy for use in his garage, and he sent me over some dimensions of the back wall where he wants the workbench to be placed. I designed a simple frame made from basic 63mm by 38mm construction timber. These are commonly known as 3x2s, although they actually measure less than 3 by 2 inches. I created a cut list from there and worked out that we needed seven 2.4 meter lengths of the 3x2s to complete the frame, which we purchased new at our local DIY shop. For the worktop and the shelf, I already had some salvaged pieces of 18 mm plywood which I found dumped by some bins. They were painted and pretty dirty on one side, but fairly clean on the other side. The drawings showing the full dimensions and a cut list will be available for download on my website if you're interested in building this workbench. We started by cutting the outer leg pieces to length. I used the miter saw to cut all of the pieces for the frame to the right length based on the drawing. Next we cut the inner leg pieces which would later support the apron rails or stretches that would support both the shelf and the worktop. I set up a stop block at my mitre station to cut these pieces to a consistent size. And then we cut the apron rails or stretches to length. So these are the pieces that we had cut so far. The four pieces on the left are the aprons and on the right are all of the pieces that form the legs. We first positioned the smallest inner leg pieces flush with the bottom of the outer leg pieces, then used an offcut as a spacer to get the distance correct for the apron rails. We applied wood glue, drilled some holes with a countersink bit and screwed the pieces together. I marked up with a pencil some positions for the screws just so that they were centered and spaced equally apart just for aesthetic reasons. Next we applied glue and added the apron rails which we attached with two 60mm screws at each joint. I used a large sash clamp to help hold the pieces together while I added the screws. Then we cut some shelf supports that would go in between the apron rails to support the shelf and the main worktop. We used some of the short offcuts of the 3x2s by ripping them in half to create some cleats. These were then cut to length and glued and nailed to the sides of the shelf supports. These would later be used to secure the shelf and the worktop to the frame from underneath, so we pre-drilled the holes for that. Then we cut the side pieces for the frame. Next we did a dry assembly of the frame just to make sure that we were on track with our measurements. Then we started cutting the plywood to size, starting with the main worktop. Because these were salvaged pieces of plywood, I first checked to find a corner that was a perfect 90 degree angle with a framing square and then I took all of my measurements from that corner. I set up a straight edge to cut it to the correct width. My straight edge was a bit too short to use clamps here, so I got Steve to stand on one end instead, just to make sure that it wouldn't move. I made the cut with my cordless circular saw. And then I could cut the workpiece to length in the same way. Then we cut the shelf to the size that we wanted, and to fit this piece between the legs we needed to make a few cutouts. I used a speed square and pencil to mark them up, and a jigsaw to make the cuts.
and that fitted in place just fine. We wanted to cover the plywood edges at the front of the workbench to make them more hard wearing. I had some reclaimed pine bed slats which I ripped to strips of 20mm on the table saw. Then I glued and brad nailed it to the front of the shelf, making sure that the trim was flush with the top face of the shelf. And for the worktop we did the same again, applying a trim, except we also mitered the corners and did the sides of the worktop as well, just because they would be more visible and this would give it a cleaner look. I used a block plane just to break the sharp edges of the trim pieces. Then we went over to Steve's house to assemble the bench. We could add the shelf supports with glue and two screws at each joint. And there were two of these to support the worktop and two for the shelf. And then we could add the side pieces which would help to keep the frame rigid and also support the shelf and worktop too. Then I tipped it up on its side to add the shelf and it was quite a tight fit now so I used my body weight to force it in place. I could then add screws through the cleats into the plywood to secure the shelf. We didn't add wood glue here as we wanted the worktop and the shelf to be replaceable at a later date. Then I added the top making sure it was nicely centered onto the frame. We then offered up the workbench to the space and we deliberately left an overhang at the back of the shelf and worktop so that we could fit the bench around a brick column where the workbench would be placed. We marked up where the column was onto the shelves. The column stuck out 12 centimeters from the wall, so we'd left a 12 centimeter overhang between the edge of the back of the shelves and the frame to account for that. We cut out the shape with the jigsaw. and it fitted in place nicely. That was a nice quick and simple build. The overall cost for materials was just £21 and that was for the seven 3x2s which were around £3 each. Everything else we used was either salvaged or I already had in my workshop. And the project only took five hours to complete and that includes the time it took for me to travel over to Steve's house. I've uploaded all of my drawings with full dimensions and a cut list to my website so if you'd like to have a go at building this workbench head over to the website and you can download those. Oh,